What's up, everyone? So today I wanted to talk about uh, why a Christian should not drink alcohol. What's up? Welcome to Counting Wisdom. Uh, you can check out more information at washye.com to get more Bible-based content. And, um, you know, what does the Bible say about alcohol? Well, I think even outside of scripture, there's a lot of good reasons why you shouldn't drink alcohol. And I think if you look at what your life is right now, you know, are you really at the place that you want to be in life? Or are you having problems? Are you sad are you depressed? Uh, it could be because of a chemical imbalance that is happening from alcohol. But then you have to really realize, does God really want you to drink alcohol? Um, I think there's points where the Bible talks about drinking, but I don't think it's supposed to be taken as something that we are to do today. Um, I think there's moments in the Bible, for example, that God has said that they, uh, should go out and fight, you know, remember when, uh, God said that he wanted the children of Israel to go out and conquer and to kill people. Well, that isn't what God wants for us today. He doesn't want any Christians to be killing anybody in the name of anything, you know, uh, and that brings on other questions as well about war and conquering. Well, I take the opinion that, you know, if someone slaps us on the right cheek to turn to them, the other also, but it's not easily said. It's easier. I mean, it's not easily said for one, but it's not. It's easier said than done. So let's look at a few Bible verses. The first Bible verse I want to look at is Isaiah twenty-eight seven. It says, "But they also have erred through wine, and through strong drink, drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink." They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. So the first part of this says, but they also have erred through wine. So erred means to error, to do something wrong. And how many stories have you heard or how many stories could you tell about times that you've done something wrong because you were inebriated, because you had drank the night before or drink the day of and so there's moments where the bible does talk about alcohol but i think you really have to come to terms i think it's sometimes like for me it was easier to say that i wanted to drink because it's what i wanted to do but it's really a drug it's really something that is addictive let's continue looking first timothy five twenty three says Drink no longer no longer water, but use a little wine for your stomach's sake and your after infirmities. Well, can we really say that's why we would drink wine today? I mean, really, there's medicine today. Like, I don't think they had Tylenol cold when they, uh, you know, when Timoth when Paul was telling Timothy to drink a little wine for his stomach's sake. And are you really drinking wine for that instance? Like, do you literally drink because you're sick or do you or do you not? Let's take a quick pause and uh, go over to Proverbs 31. Let's check out what Proverbs 31 has to say. And this is the, you should already know what I'm going to say, but... Proverbs 31 says, what my son, what son of my womb, what son of my vows, 
Do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to which destroy kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. So we're supposed, it's not for kings to drink wine. And you could say, oh, well, I'm not a king. Well, actually, you you are. Jesus said that he makes us kings and priests. He, the kingdom of God is of kings and priests in the New Jerusalem. You can find that in Revelation. But let's say, let's let's say, okay, that's not convincing. Let's say, who does it give strong drink to? It read, it go on, it goes on to read, give strong drink to him who is perishing, and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let them drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. So you can tell right there, there's a reason to be drinking. The two reasons are if you are dying, like not the way of the world, like everyone is going to die. No, that's not what it's talking about. It's actually talking about if you are literally on your deathbed, you know, You've, it's kind of in westerns you see sometimes in westerns where you know there is someone who is drinking and it's because they're kind of like you know you know just about to die so anyway Proverbs 21 wine is a mocker strong drink is raging and whoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So can we really say that drinking is something that God wants? It says whoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Meaning, I think this means that if you've ever gotten drunk by alcohol, then you're deceived by it because that's not what God wants for us. You know, because, I mean, unless you've drinking alcohol and you've never gotten drunk from it, you just drink it, then that's a, di a little bit of a different story. But even in there, you still shouldn't be drinking. Okay, let's go to Isaiah 5.22. Woe to them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink. So, excuse me, so it says here, woe to them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink. Okay, let's go to Romans 14, 21. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor drink wine, nor, nor anything, nor do anything whereby your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. So for me, you know, if I have other Christians in my life that they don't like drinking, then it is a disservice if I were to continue to drink and still say that I'm loving my brother or sister. You know, it's it's good not to do those things because I say that I love them. Okay, let's go on to Ephesians 5.18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So I think that's an answer right there. I think that we have to let the Holy Spirit lead us to be filled with the Spirit. I think if we want the feelings that alcohol gives us without really seeing clearly, I think we have to let the Holy Spirit fill us. You know, one thing I, I've asked and I think is, you know, God, fill me with those feelings that I would feel from alcohol but with the holy spirit and that could be something that you say similar to that but you know i think we need to really take some studying and really see is alcohol really a benefit you know or are you just fooling yourself are you just drinking because you like it and it's for pleasure and the bible says that 
at God's right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And I think the Bible also talks about being sober. And I think a person isn't sober if they drink alcohol, any amount of alcohol. I mean, I guess if you, if I'm really being honest, you can drink like a little bit and still be sober. But who drinks just a little bit without them even feeling it? I I agree that being tipsy is not necessarily being sober. You know, you're you're not sober minded, you know? And and so I think it really is I think alcohol is tricky because it's I think it's difficult to see. And have you acknowledged God? Have you asked your have you asked God, God, do you want me to drink? You know, or do you not even bring it up? And do you just kind of try to decide on your own? You know, I think what trumps what I have to say, what trumps what anyone has to say is what God says. And that is acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. You know, it's not about me convincing you you shouldn't drink, but and and convincing myself I shouldn't drink. I think we have to really see you know, God, do you want me to drink? And if he says yes, then that's between you and God. But if he says no, and he leads you to not drink, then I think that's the choice that we have to honor. And so even with certain decisions, you know, if I know that I acknowledge God, but it's not necessarily the outcome that I particularly want, if I know that God is directing my steps, I'm going to go along with that. Uh, Lord willing, you know. So I don't think you should take it lightly. I think that you shouldn't drink alcohol. I think the Bible supports that. And I think, you know, the I think it's not necessarily wrong when people say you can drink alcohol. You know, and I think that it couldn't be wrong but at the same time the bible also says it's good to not drink wine or alcohol to you know please your brother or sister who believes that they shouldn't you know and if there's a christian out there that you know that whether you whether you see them or not you know i mean it's supposed to be between you and god but you shouldn't be telling other people that you drink alcohol because then that could hurt their faith you know i think what that bible verse means is that you know if you drink you drink in secret you know you don't tell others that you are drinking and i think if you have to do it in secret you shouldn't be drinking at all and i think jesus wants us to deny himself you know And honestly, when you talk about Jesus drinking, we don't know how much he drank, you know, there's nothing, they call Jesus a drunk, and we all know, we all know that Jesus didn't sin, we all know that Jesus was not a drunk, you know, unless you somehow believe that Jesus was a drunk, but we know he wasn't, we know he was the son of God. And so I think you have to really put it in perspective of judgment when God judges us, when he judges us and he says he judges us for the things that we do in our body. Can we really say that we loved our brother or sister, but we continue drinking when we know that some of them don't like it and it hurts their faith? So I would say research the topic a little more before you decide to take that first drink. Uh, But I think there is common sense and evidence to say that it's not something that should be done. All right. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I hope that it was helpful. If you want more resources, uh, please visit my website, W-A-S-H-Y-E dot com. But you can also visit uh, AA Alcoholics Anonymous or Celebrate Recovery if you like more Christ-centered recovery topics. Thank you so much and have a great day.